Will you be a reader, a student, merely a seer? Read your fate, see what is before you, and walk on into fortuity. I did not read books the first summer. I hoed beans. This is where we pick up this week as we continue our discussion on Henry David Thoreau's Walden. Specifically, we're looking at his perspectives on literature and poetry. So please stick with us as we hop into these ideas here on Circle Theory. It's gotta be this time. Yeah. Set and rise. some interesting ideas about literature, poetry, and art, which he is not shy about discussing at all in his works. He brings up quite a few different discussion points, but first, if you haven't watched our first video on Thoreau, please go back and take a look because that will provide context for this in general. So he talks about a few different things, and he almost shows a disdain, which is odd for a poet. But he, he mentions this a few times with this work, right? He says, a, wit a written word is the choicest of relics. It is something at once more intimate with us and more universal than any other work of art. It is the work of art nearest to life itself. So we start there with this idea that the written word is a reflection of our reality. That from this, we can gain a better understanding of reality itself because it creates a mirror image of it. That through this art, we may be able able to achieve a greater understanding of truth, but at the same time, he goes to Walden to escape this. He finds himself at the lake trying to be removed from these ideas so that he can rediscover himself. And so he, as he continues, he says, I believe that men are generally still a little afraid of the dark, though the witches are all hung and Christianity and candles have been introduced. And so what he's talking about is really interesting here. He's suggesting that in general, as humans, we still have this innate fear of monsters and what hides beyond the woods, no matter what we have done. We have found systems and things and deals to try to show that the monster can be defeated, but we're still left with them. We're still afraid of them. We're afraid of what we don't understand. And art becomes a way to show this. And we do this through literature and story, and we discuss how to conquer them. Right? This is the whole idea behind Campbell's work, that we're creating a system over and over again to show what is required to defeat the monsters that exist in the wood. And in, no matter how many times we get candles and lights and things to show us that there aren't in the dark, there's this innate human urge, this innate fear that we tend to project onto others. And this is something that he tends to be a little bit distasteful of, this idea that we, we tend to become afraid of one another and we use various images and arts to do that. Rather, art itself is supposed to represent this reality. It's supposed to represent the truer part of ourself. It is a reflection. And so he continues talking about these ideas. And I think one of my favorite quotes from the book, he says, When I hear the iron horse make the hills echo with his snort like thunder, breathing fire and smoke from his nostrils, what kind of winged horse or fiery dragon will they put into the new mythology? I don't know. And so what he's discussing here is that we still create monsters and images and fears that we artistically represent through literature, mythos, and stories, and that the new Americana has a new mythos in and of itself, that this is something that we will use to be able to represent our fears through symbols, a very Campbellian idea again, but in general, that this is how things come to be. And so he's making a prediction of the future that we will find new ways to represent those. And I think that that's probably true today. You know, one of the things I found really interesting is if you ever notice the trend of, of zombie films becoming big, right? this endless stream of monotony that seems to be an almost artistic representation of the countless emails found in the inbox, of the day-to-day -day emptiness of trying to meaninglessly complete tasks for the sake of doing it that I find to be an interesting representation representation of what we experience today. And so in general, he talks about ancient poets and artists and the deeds that they, they hold, right? That they are objected to having, they are objected by being able to have large farms and large crops that, that go into the fields and they're stuck working, that we can't have our creativity because we're too busy hoeing seeds all day long, that we have become mechanical and lost our ability to be poets in and of itself. 
this is an interesting idea. He continues it when he talks about festival, right? This is something that's almost absent from, from current society, right? We have no festival, no procession, no ceremony, not accepting our cattle shows and so-called thanksgivings, by which the farmer expresses a sense of the sacredness of his calling or is reminded of its sacred origin. You know, when we look at other societies throughout history, we see a constant showing of festival, of of party and sacrament in which we're able to re-engage with the meaning of life, that we are able to see it in ourselves and go and engage with one another in a meaningful way. But these sacraments are gone. We no longer connect with them. We have been removed from that. And he sees this as a great issue, that we have lost our ability to be able to engage with each other in that meaningful way because we're too busy working. And so this is where we pick up next week with our video on the problem with civilization. I hope to catch you next Tuesday here on Circle Theory. Thanks for watching this week's episode on Henry David Thoreau and his great work, Walden. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, uh, and subscribe. Let us know what you learned today. We'd love to discuss it with you. And like always, see you next week as we continue our series. Catch you next time.